and go to any logic here, go to examples, and there's an SIR agent-based calibration. If you open that, you will see something that in many ways is quite similar. Here we have a calibration experiment. You can also do this with an optimization experiment, okay? Um, which is available in PLE. Um, so uh, here we have, again, a situation where the experiment runs main class many, many times, okay? And for each time it runs the main class, it's going, well, it's gonna run it many times, and as it runs it, it's gonna vary values of parameters as specified here within certain ranges. Some of them are fixed, some of them are varying, so as to minimize a discrepancy between historic data and the model results. Now, I believe I've provided you a model that is a more sophisticated um, type of, of calibration that calibrates against multiple time series at once. But here, you have a historic time series and you're gonna run the calibration and it's going to try to try different values of parameters to match this yellow historic data as closely as possible. And this graph up here shows the progress that it's making, okay? So the graph up here shows the discrepancy and shows as it's bringing it down how, how close the latest value has been in red, the, the best value so far. So you can see all the times it's tried. Some of them are better than others. You can see now it's, it's actually got a pretty good fit to it. And it's adjusting two parameters, these ones here, to try to get this, this best fit. So what's happening is it's trying to minimize this discrepancy by varying these parameters specified within this range so as to best match emergent data. Often, ladies and gentlemen, we have data from the world of different sorts. Some of the data, such as data from statistical analyses of certain sorts, again, certain types of, of Russian-based findings, uh, findings from a competing risk analysis, we can plug in directly into our model for parameter values. Sometimes we can get them from the literature. Sometimes we can estimate them directly from parameter value. But often we have a lot of data that's not data about a particular parameter. It's data about observations of the models, oh, excuse me, of the system's behavior in the world as a whole or parts of it. And that data can't be used to estimate a particular parameter value in isolation. But it tells us something about the models, well, how the model has to behave. It's emergent data from the world. It's not related to one particular parameter value, but patterns of dynamics over time. And often that data is really quite voluminous or, or extensive, and we can plug that into our model, or, or use it together with our model, I should say, to find values of parameters for which the model matches that observed data as closely as possible. So it's leveraging a different sort of data again to help constrain our understanding of what plausible parameter values are. And instead of just plugging it in to a particular parameter value, instead we adjust the parameter values so that the model best matches the observed data, in this case over time. That's calibration. We observe some emergent pattern of data from the, from the world, we match it with model emergent patterns, patterns over time, and we adjust the parameters so they're as close to match as possible, okay? So those are some comments of calibration. You can find lectures by me, sometimes in two parts, on the web where I explain in detail how, eight, how this calibration process works in any logic. And I believe I provided you the model with more detail. Suffice it to say that it runs the model many, many times, just like that parameter variation. And if we scroll down in the calibration, you will find that just as in parameter variation, you fill in these elements here. And just as in parameter variation, you read data out of that main class with this root. You read data out, you fill up some data sets in here, and you basically try to match those data sets you read out from the model, DS current, with the historic data. 
So you're sucking data out of the model after it runs from its emergent behavior, and you're comparing that with the historic data. And you're trying to minimize that discrepancy, running the model again and again and again, okay? So that's the basics of, of calibration and any logic. I apologize, I don't have time to go into that more. Just suffice it to say, you can match against multiple sources of data, and it uses a fairly sophisticated algorithm to match it. Um, and there's, uh, and you could specify a difference function, a discrepancy function to use. Again, you'll find videos of me explaining this in quite some detail separately. Um, oh, one very important point, if you're running a model that is stochastic, in general, you will want to run multiple replications of that model. So for a given set of values, given set of assumptions about the parameters, you can run the model many, many times to see, to, to find not just by happenstance one value, one run of the model with those parameters, but many runs and average them, um, uh, and average their discrepancies rather than just depending on one run to be represented, one realization. You're gonna run multiple realizations for a given set of parameters to judge how good that realization, how good those parameters are compared to the empirical data. You don't wanna just run it, uh, compare on the basis of a single datum. Okay.